latch on. You can put it. Okay. Okay. K1 is, okay, uh-oh, here we go, ready? <laughs> K1 is that point right there between your, your first two toes, just down on the ball of your foot. Okay, so it, right doesn't or left is, is either matter. way is fine. Generally, right is receiving, left is giving. The, the most conductive surfaces right. on your body is the palm of your hand and the palms of your feet. Okay, so that's something to consider. So if you, you know, really want to get the, the action going, you're going to have to take your shoe off, it looks like, and it's okay. And we're going to find out about taking our shoes off here together and how important that is, not only for the electrical part of being able to connect with the earth, but also for posture. This is a really big deal. A couple of years ago when I met Clint Ober and, and found out about all this knowledge and information, I decided I was going to start getting into the barefoot revolution. So I started going barefoot and I noticed over a period of time that it worked off imperfections in the way I was walking and running. And it really had a profound impact on me. And that's why we're so inspired to share with you the information that we're going to share tonight. It's, it's like, okay, it's time to get barefoot again. I mean, we were in Otiro and the great beaches there, and it's just unbelievable the opportunity to walk barefoot and connect with the earth there. And what an opportunity, if you have that, to do, go an hour walk a day barefoot, get your posture sorted out, your hips, your ankles, your knees, get the inflammation down, et cetera. All right, now let's keep going here. Of course, you know, We're all making positive strides on our health. <laughs> but we now know that one of the biggest enemies may be the real enemy. Very, very deep, very, very core is in fact not the usual suspects. Poor air, poor diet, obesity, genetics, physical inactivity. In fact, what I'm gonna talk about is how grounding yourself to the earth affects your genetics and affects your DNA immediately. This is something that's never been discussed in public before because the shoe is the real deal. <laughs> this is the one, this is where the real problems began. Anybody happen across this last year in 2009, great book came out, Christopher McDougall's Born to Run. Who read that book? Two big takeaways from that book, and it's about 40 years of research on the running shoe. And basically, the conclusion of the book is it's all a lemon. What a bad word, choice of words, right? For something like a bad car is a lemon? Where'd they get that from? It should be called a cheeseburger. But, you know, it's just how it is. 40 years of running shoes, and they found out the whole thing, you don't need running shoes. And in fact, it causes problems. And one of the things I've noticed for myself the last two years of playing with barefoot, it's actually, it might be exactly two years this weekend, um, is your toes are like in a cast when you're in a shoe. So your toes are not activated. This basically affects your posture and derivatively over your entire life puts distortions into your posture, let alone the electromagnetic phenomenon that's going on. He, there's also another really good takeaway from that book, and that is the greatest runners in the world, the Tarahumara Native Americans, their main food is chia seed. Their main food is chia seed. Very important because I've been, I took that bit of knowledge and I've been turning on athletes like Marcus Patrick to that. I've been turning on my friend David Daly who did, he might be watching right now, who did, a, a, I think he did a marathon or he was doing some long distance running. And now we're finding out that when we are grounded and that we're taking in the right kind of nutrition, there ain't nothing stopping us. And the greatest runners in the world have this in mind. Okay, let's keep going here. I love this slide. If you look at it, you see like the dog's happy, right? Like there's the gal or guy there with no shoes on. Everything's happy. But you notice that as soon as those shoes go on, irritability starts in. <laughs> irritability starts in with the shoes. This is an important discovery. And, and so that little kind of like is not an accident. And we'll be revisiting these types of images all weekend. In the beginning, we were designed to go barefoot. One of the great assumptions that we've now overturned about food and about shoes is that there's something wrong with our foot and there's something wrong with our food. Therefore, we need to correct it, right? That's the whole idea of this food processing industry and the candy industry is that there's some kind of assumption that mother nature doesn't present it to us or God doesn't pre present it to us in the way it's supposed to be eaten. Therefore, we need to change things to correct it. Same with our foot. There's some kind of assumption that says, well, our foot's not perfect, so we need to correct it. And the research is showing that our, actually our foot is perfect. 
A really big discovery for me personally is running through the woods barefoot, even in the fall and winter time, I notice I never stub my toe anymore, ever. But I do stub the, the ball of my foot quite a bit because when we walk naturally, our toes come up so we cannot stub our toe. That's interesting. Now you can feel right away, if you right now lift your toes up, let's all do that. You feel that it's got a derivative effect through all your legs, throughout your whole posture. Do you feel that? Just to lift your toes up. And we can imagine what the effects are over a lifetime. Okay, so now let's talk about what it means to be grounded and what that looks like. If we had a room filled with oxygen and the room next door had about 8% oxygen and we're in there going, ah! if we open the door between them, what's going to happen? What, what happens? Right, it floods in. There, it, it's called diffusion in the plants. It's called osmosis that everything tries to equal out. And so the oxygen will rush into that room in order to fill that gap and we'll go, oh, whew. And that's exactly what it's like to go barefoot. As soon as you put your foot on the ground, the electricity rushes into you because in most cases, in fact, in all cases, we're deficient in the earth's electrons or electricity. And therefore the earth goes senses and imbalance and literally it, it's like suction. It's just drawn right into you over time because we have various gates that block just the immediate absorption of everything over time it imp increases your electrical, negative electrical charge, or you gain more electricity. And that's what this idea is. Anytime you have two conductive objects, two rooms next to each other, that make contact, you open the door, such as your bare feet on the ground, the electrons will flow from the place where they are abundant, remember that room with all the oxygen in it, into the place where they're less abundant. The electrical potential of the two objects will thus equalize, and that's called earthing. That's called grounding. And that's when we come to that place of starting to be connected again to the earth. You ever heard this phrase before? We're disconnected. I feel ungrounded. Or you ground your child. Their behaviors are erratic, crazy. You're grounded. Right? The anxiety, the erratic behavior. We're going to look at some slides here that I believe are going to shock you. And this is the science. And Clint has been responsible. It's been about 30 studies now on this subject. And we're just going to be giving you the, the cliff notes on all that. Pictures, which is great because you can see the bar graphs. You can see the images. You can see how things change over time when you're grounded. We're going to see the blood. What happens, right? You're going to get to feel that. And what's going to end up happening is we're going to see what happens in an hour or two. It's only going to, you know, 20 minutes. All right. So this is the original energy medicine. Does anybody know what K1 is nicknamed in Chinese medicine? What's K1 again? Bubbling well. Bubbling, well, bubbling spring. What is, that's big, isn't it? Take a good listen to that. Bubbling spring. What happens at a bubbling spring? energy bursts forth. It's actually electrons burst forth out of the earth and they're drawn up by suction. And in that moment where it, it comes forth, you actually, that's where you want to drink the water. I've been doing this and we're going to see some, you're going to get some insight here about this grounding stuff because I've been actually camping out next to sacred springs where the water comes out. Listen to this, putting a grounding rod into the spring and running it to K1. I'm just taking it literally. It's like, okay, it's, that's bubbling spring this. Let me just see what happens if I connect that. There are a lot of energies, by the way, that we're going to touch on here, having been named various different things in the secret life of plants. Hieronymus's research was named aloptic energies, which are energies that come out of the earth that are in the cosmos that are conducted down metal wires that aren't electromagnetic, that are healthy and healing for you and plants. You also get those things when you're grounded. So we, somebody asked me a very, very good question in 2009. In April 2009, it was the best question I got all year. It was a question.